this is Sherry Traxler with Vireo Life and I am thrilled for us to talk about tomatoes today. 10 tomato tips and recipes. We have a tomato plant growing here that was a freebie. It was a freebie from last year's garden actually. One of the tomato plants dropped some of the tomatoes because we didn't get to them in time and evidently, obviously, a seed somehow took root in a garden path and this spring whenever we were weeding the garden paths we said I don't think this is a weed I think this is a tomato plant and sure enough we went from a little tomato plant transplanted from the garden path now it's about three feet tall and will give us great tomatoes this year as it keeps going up so that's actually our first tip is where do you grow these tomato plants how do you start them you can either purchase a plant and grow it in a container. So if you don't have room for a full garden or even a small space garden, you can do a container garden. Do a basil plant, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, as well as a tomato plant, side by side in two containers. You can also do from seed. If you wanna start from seed in a small container indoors, we have two that we started from seed actually in the garden. It was too late to start indoors, so we just said, Let's see what happens. We'll plant them in the soil itself. And right now we've got a couple of little tomato plants started in this bed. So that's one tip is where do you start these? Second is planting them for the sun. How much sun do they need? Tomatoes are a summer plant. They need full sun. We had a couple given to us a few years ago that all the space we had left was semi shade, had about three hours of sunlight a day. It did grow some tomatoes for us, but nothing like if you get six to 10 hours of sunshine a day. Another tip is companion planting. Two big companion plants for us. One is basil that you see here. Basil, when it flowers, is going to attract the beneficial insects for the tomato. And how do you let it flower, but not have the basil get all stringy and stalky and not have enough leaves? If you have space for two basil plants, that's a solution. But if you only have space for one, let a few areas of the basil stalks go ahead and flower to attract your beneficial insects, and then let the rest of it pinch off the flowers so that you can use it for culinary purposes. Another is companion plant is borage. You see a big one in the back that's flowering, and then down here is a small one. Both of those came from where borage seeds had dropped and we've gotten borage coming up so we transplant it wherever we need it when it's really small. With borage, companion planting with that affects some of the pests that we're going to talk about. First pest is tomato hornworms. That's something we've experienced and borage is supposed to confuse tomato hornworms. That's what I have heard, that's what I have read and research, but I don't know how. So if you know how Tomato hornworms are confused by borage plants. Please put that in the comments section because I would love to learn how they are confused. Another pest that tomatoes deal with are aphids. For that, insecticidal soap. Purchase insecticidal soap or make your own a quart of water, a teaspoon of just dishwashing soap, and a pinch of cayenne. Anywhere that you see your aphids, spray this on them to knock them off and also the soap will uh, destroy the aphids. They're a soft-bodied insect. What kind of nutrients do tomatoes need? What can you do to add some nutrients for them? Eggshells. Tomatoes need calcium. So take eggshells, grind them up in your coffee grinder, mix them in the soil around the base of the tomato plant, and that's gonna give your tomatoes the calcium they need. So let's review. Container or in the ground, full sun, six to 10 hours a day, companion plants of basil and borage, get rid of your tomato hornworms with your borage, as well as aphids with the insecticidal soap, and eggshells in your coffee grinder for your nutrients. That basil we were talking about tastes so good with tomatoes. So what we're gonna do now is go in and make some recipes with that. See you inside. Well, we're inside now and ready to get started on our tomato and basil recipes. Before we do that, let's talk about why eat tomatoes other than the great taste. Lycopene, it is a phenomenal phytonutrient. It causes the red pigment in fruits and vegetables. So watermelon, tomatoes, but tomatoes 
are especially important because they're very high in lycopene. And also lycopene is made more readily available in the body when it's heated. So watermelon, don't really know how that tastes heated. I've never tried it, but tomatoes are great. What does lycopene do? Lycopene has been shown to help slow prostate enlargement. It's been shown to decrease the risk of prostate, breast, and lung cancer. It's been shown to help prevent hardening of the arteries. And some preliminary research shows that it can decrease the perimenopause symptoms and may also help with male fertility. So let's get started looking at some tomato recipes. Okay, now we've got our four ways to eat tomatoes and a couple of them with basil as well. Two of them are chilled, two of them are heated. The two that are chilled, one I do not have here, but I have a link below for you to be able to order it if you don't want to make your own, and that is tomato jam. It's a very fancy way of having tomatoes that you can have on bread, you can put it on savory dishes. The other cold or room temperature way to have tomatoes is take some basil leaves, slice of tomato, some goat cheese, and then any type of vinegar that you like. I like a raspberry balsamic, it adds some sweetness to it. Heated recipes, if you are gluten sensitive or gluten intolerant, using polenta versus regular lasagna noodles is a great way to make a lasagna type dish. You can take the polenta, put it with some water in a saucepan, cook it down, and spread that in your dish. I do the quick, easy way, and that is just slice up the polenta into rounds on the bottom, and then your garlic, your onion, your ground beef, sauteed in a pan, layered on top of that. Tomato sauce that you've either made from the tomatoes you've grown or gotten at the farmer's market or just a nice jarred sauce spread on top of that, just like you would lasagna. Then another layer of polenta slices and your cheese on top of that. But I saved my favorite for last. And that is a fun little appetizer, tapas, snacks, whatever you wanna do with it. Take those polenta rounds, put your basil leaf or two, depending on the size on top of that, a slice of tomato, and then cheddar, Swiss, whatever type of square cube cheese that you want. A slice of that on top with a toothpick and cook that in the oven until it is bubbling and hot and you've got a really nice appetizer or snack. Well, those are four easy ways to get in your tomatoes, your lycopene this summer, and I hope that it helps you and gives you some ideas. Thanks so much for watching and remember to subscribe so that you can be the first to receive our new videos. And until next time, find your path and fulfill your potential.